More than 70 years after the end of World War II, a former Nazi SS guard is about to face justice for his role at the Auschwitz death camp. Reinhold Hanning is 94 and lives here in Lage, Germany with his son and daughter-in-law. For most of his life, no one has known about his SS past. But now he stands charged with being an accessory to the murder of more than 100,000 Jews who were delivered to Auschwitz and dispatched almost immediately to the gas chambers or who died soon after due to forced labour and starvation. With many of the Holocaust survivors who testified against him in court, Hanning will learn his fate on Friday. He was just the guard, you know, he was just the sergeant in the guard unit in, uh, in Auschwitz. Uh, I mean, if he was a brave man wearing SS uniform, uh, now when he's close to his grave, you know, can he be as brave, you know? There is this guy who re literally decided life and death within seconds, without asking your name, without knowing who you are, where you come from. He looked at you and said, right, left. And, and he had that choice. Opens this blanket and there's a baby crying. He grabbed the baby by the ankles and smashed the head against the side of the truck. And then he said, the crying stopped. It was just like, you know, it, uh, we did our followed orders, you know. The life of a baby, what does it count? We were pressed against each other, standing, holding each other up as the boxcar swayed. There was one little window for some fresh air with barbed wire. As soon as they opened the doors, there was no time. Within moments, there were screams of men separate to the left. My entire family were selected out for sent to the gas chamber. My father and uncle and I we were selected for slave labor. And we only had seconds to say goodbye. Uh, there was, actually, there was no goodbye said, you know, it was so fast. The terrible thing is that it seemed to be such a routine thing as far as the place was concerned, you know. People just gone. I'll never forget. I'll never forgive. Imagine people, 2,000 people dying, trying to catch the last breath of air from poison gas where the SS officers and the guests that they used to bring to Birkenau to see the dying of thousands of people. They were watching it through these peoples. This was a hell on earth. It's a machine of the devil. I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye to my dad. I cried out after my mom and she heard me and she turned. We just looked at each other. I don't know for how long a moment or a minute. And then without saying a word, she turned around and kept on going. And I never saw her again. One day I came home and found an interesting message on my uh, answering machine told me that they are going to prosecute a Nazi who was in Auschwitz-Birkenau and are looking for witnesses, in their words, plaintiffs in German jurisdiction. And he explained that he felt very bad about the way Nazis, criminals, uh, over decades were not prosecuted. And he is trying to establish a precedent where people who were part of the process, aiding and abetting, will be found, have to be found guilty of the crime. The world has to know what has happened. And I'd like to be able to say, well, don't listen to me, listen to a German court. Here I am in a German court as a Jewish survivor being a witness in the trial of a German Nazi guard. I really don't care whether he goes to jail as such. I'm very anxious that he should be convicted, that the court and the world should know that here was a man who was there and who did these crimes and he was convicted so that there should be a record forever. 
My daughter and my granddaughter are both coming with me and I think there is a three generations who are going to be there and to me there is a victory of a sort, you know, that we survived and not only that we survived but that, that there is a progress. Very honestly I look at this trip as a closure and I hope that somehow or other this will close a phase in my life too that I will be able to look at or, or not to have to look at the past with such fear. The word that comes to mind is miracle. Not in my wildest dreams would I have imagined in Auschwitz-Birkenau that this could happen, that it will happen, and that I will be here. I see the same person who was in Auschwitz-Birkenau, just older, in terrific shape, masquerading as an old man for sympathy. We mean nothing to him, just as we meant nothing to him then. I don't believe he changed. He's no different. Former SS officer Reinhold Hanning has been found guilty of aiding and abetting in the murder of 170,000 Jews at the Auschwitz death camp, where he was stationed between 1943 and 1944. At what is widely believed to be the final Nazi trial because of the advancing ages of the accused SS officers, the 94-year-old Hanning showed little emotion when the verdict was announced. The widower, who arrived in a wheelchair, was sentenced to five years in prison, but is not expected to serve any time in custody. In this situation, uh, in, in December he is 95, and I don't know any case where somebody was put to the jail with, with the age of 95. As an SS guard, he knew that his job was to ensure the Nazis' horrifically efficient industrialization of murder, said Judge Anka Gruda in her decision. You had an important function, she said. With your guard duties, you ensured the seamless performance of the killing machine. For survivors Hetty Baum and Bill Gleed of Toronto, this verdict in a German court finally gave voice to their murdered parents and siblings. This um, finding of justice, so late justice, um, it, changed, it changed their life. And they have the real feeling that this late justice is also justice for their parents and uh, their siblings. They feel it, they can touch it, the justice. It is really a milestone in these series of cases to not only look at selection and gas chambers, but to declare the work of a member of the guards in one of these camps as being accessory to murder of all the murders that happened in the time he served there. So this is the historic meaning of this verdict. I feel that my loved ones who were murdered finally got some justice, <coughs> acknowledgement, against those who say, even today, that this never happened. That my murdered mother and father now, perhaps, can rest in peace. To the judge saying all of the things that I would have said as a Holocaust survivor brought me very close to crying. I feel tremendous elation in the fact that I am sitting in a German court with my daughter, with my granddaughter, which proves that we, like the eternal phoenix, rise again from the Holocaust ashes.